Good morning, friends. So in my blog of August 1st, 2019, you'll see a couple of my last two YouTubes embedded there. One's called Codester Slides SOS, American Lit. That's Save Our Ship, right? My goal here is to give you an overview of an American literature that I think we need to teach with some urgency, but where a lot of people think it's just to put on a shelf and maybe it'll be interesting to some future PhD student. Maybe we'll dig it up in a couple hundred years and write something, but you know, nothing really urgent. And I think part of the difference in perspective comes from how we read history. For example, I see Fuller as like a chief diplomat. You know, we've all heard of Henry Kissinger and Condoleezza Rice and so on, but Fuller is flying around the world a jet setter long before most, and he's meeting a lot of important people. He's got his network, Indira Gandhi and so on, and he's got a positive futurism. And then he's got all these artifacts and patents. And there's the Dew Line in Montreal 67, the Dome in Afghanistan. He's a major player, major player. Behind the scenes, he's doing this two-volume synergetics, which he's really being encouraged by his longtime admirer, E.J. Applewhite, who has a career in the CIA, but when he retires, he pushes... Bucky into, let's get these two volumes out, super important, writes a book, Cosmic Fishing. Now Fuller, he dies, and so what's his legacy? And no one reads Synergetics, no one studies it, except very few people, and I'm one of those people. And I go straight to the web, partly because I always wanted hypertext and hyperlinks, and if you publish something in a dead wood pulp journal, like a math journal, there's no hyperlinks there. So it always made sense once the web was invented that I would do everything on the web, of course, right? Made made perfect sense. But there's a downside to that in that, you know, you don't get your name in the journals that maybe you need to because, hey, anyone can publish to the web. So the idea is this stuff maybe has no value because I just went straight to the web. So I, I'm giving that to others to judge right now. I'm just going to say, here's what we are up to. Here's what we're studying. And we think it's important, we the Bucky camp, and really dropping this out of the curriculum is not a good thing. So And having me be the AA battery who's kind of pushing it along, That's we need more. We need more people. So I'm, of course wanting more help right but i want to show you what we have so far so that you're not just thinking well there's nothing to help with there's no content well there is of course and it starts with the platonics the polyhedrons it's very philosophical just for that reason polyhedrons and philosophy go hand in hand and one of the innovations that david kosky has pushed is let's bring the golden mean, the number five, back into the picture, because Fuller kind of wanted to purge his thinking of a lot of legacy content, and so that maybe artificially impoverished it in some ways. So we're going back and finding out, for example, things like the Super RT, which I have flashing on the screen here. There it is, purple. There it is, Super RT. That has a volume of about 21.21 .21 tetra volumes where 20 is the cube octahedron. So we have these whole number volumes. That's the first thing to start with in addition to irrational volumes. Icosahedron, pentagonal, dodecahedron. We can express those with phi. But in tetra volumes, it's all relative to the tetrahedron of volume 1. Where I left it in my most recent video was I was talking about the E modules, how when we shrink wrap a CCP ball, right? The same balls that we can use in the closest cubic packing, we can use them in any packing, but the fact that Synergetics anchors itself in sphere packing is already a step forward, say, from the point of view of Dr. Arthur Loeb, who wrote the preface to Synergetics. Um, here's another way to introduce 
face-centered cubic lattice, what Fuller called the IVM, octet truss, Alexander Graham Bell fits in here. And those rhombic dodecahedra that closest pack and uh, every sphere is inside a rhombic dodecahedra, and those have a volume of six. You can see it here on our volumes table. And what I want to do in the remaining couple minutes here is talk again about the distinction between these two rhombic triconhedra of volume five and volume a little more than five. A little more than five is if we let the radius be one, in other words, shrink wrap. Depends on the scaling, like do we say the radius is one or 0.5? Is the diameter two or one? In my unit tests that we looked, looked at last time, I was starting with the E module and starting with the plane net that we get in synergetics. So again, it's these two rhombic triconhedron that I'm going to be talking about. This one does not have the super RT, this volumes table, right? So some of them do, some of them don't. Check Wikipedia for more. So I'm going to take this rhombic triconhedron made of E modules and shrink it a little bit more to make it of T modules instead. So here's the plane that we're talking about and it's this H that's a variable. I did have it set to R for radius, 0.5 in my framework. Now I'm going to multiply that 0.5 by 0.999 something. And you can see what number that is in, let's see, my particular slide here is giving that number in a closed form. By the way, here's the volume formula that we're using, which is a whole other talk in itself. This is Gerald de Jong. It looks a lot like something Euler came up with, but look, there's no constant in front of the whole thing. Like there's no 1 over 122 or whatever you've seen in other versions of this. It just natively spits out the unit volume, tetrahedron unit volume value, right? I have to doctor it with the synergetics constant to get the XYZ volume. This is the native IVM volume that comes out of here. Now expressing all these volumes in phi scaled S modules, E modules, and so on, that's for another other videos that I've done. I kind of lost my place here going back to this. So here's our closed form expression for the 0.99948, whatever, you don't find the closed form expression in synergetics, I don't think, which is the third root of two thirds times phi over square root of two. You're not going to find that in synergetics. Here it is, again, expressed as a footnote. Also on this side, I'm reminding you that the cube octahedron volume 20 times second root of 9.8 often called synergetics constant or S3 is going to give us this super RT volume, right? So there's the two RTs again, the five plus as I call it with the radius of exactly one and then the one with the volume of exactly five but the radius is now 0.9994 of whatever the radius was, like in my case 0.5 in the unit test. So let's go to the unit tests. So that's in my Spider IDE. All this could be a good workout, right? For someone trying to learn Python, I'd store my polyhedra in a relational database. I use quadrate coordinates. Like there is a college course here that would impart a lot of math skills in addition to an appreciation for this American literature that is so far going largely unappreciated. So I think I would make a college level lecturer um, fill that role pretty easily, but maybe maybe I do it by teleteaching, right? And maybe sometimes it's high school, middle school, and not just college, right? Because the actual math is not that hard in this case. It would be accessible to someone who's got a high school level math understanding. So the E module we've been testing now I'm going to go off and test the, um, let's see, is this the right place? I want to test the T module and the E module together, and I'm going to go out to even more, uh, I'm going to go out to 100 decimal places on when I do this. 
So let me scroll up here. There's the E module. I feel like the T module one, ah, I have two versions of this. No wonder I'm confused. I better save this version. I better close the other version before I overwrite my last, uh, I don't want to overwrite my good work with this older version. Okay, my newer work, I don't want to overwrite it. So here's the T module, and here's my expression for that number 0.9994 whatever times the original radius r, which is 0.5 in this framework, and all the rest of this is the same as we had before because I'm using the exact same plane net as I used before. This uh, plane net right here, I'm just replacing h instead of 0.5, h is now 0.5 times this other number, 0.9994. And then I run it again and get the T module volume, and I ask, are 120 of these T modules giving me a volume of 5? And almost equal is going to use this Python idea, a unit test idea, a very close, and we use it because there's always a little bit of rounding error, even out to 100 digits, because that's life in the big city, right? So I run this. And you can see, first of all, there's my 0.5 times 0.9994, right? So that's my H. And here's my T module with the 7, 1 dangling. No matter how long I make this, it's always going to, at the end, probably have a couple digits that aren't 6, 6. But this is basically 1 24th. The T module has the same volume as the A module and the B module. So A, B, and T are all 1 24th, and 120 T modules gives me the volume 5 rhombic dodecahedron. And again, Fuller makes a lot of hay out of how close these two are. If we were to look at this picture, let's see, where is it, where we talk about this very slight difference between the two. Uh, I know it's in my dimensions uh, here. This is taking 986.548 figure from Synergetics. If the radius of the rhombic tricontahedron of volume 5 were 10 inches, then we're reducing by the thickness of aluminum foil to 0.9994 or whatever. That's 1 200th of an inch difference. And yet between the two we've got um, the difference between 5 and 5 plus, what is the significance of this dis dis hairline fracture, you could almost say? I call it the gap. I have an essay called, like, Mind the Gap and so on. Does it have significance? Now, Fuller thought it did, and how speculative is synergetics when it comes to interpreting what this math means physically, right? And that's, a, that's where I would like to go next and have more people working on that with me. But even if we just look at it purely as a platonic, i.e. purely logical, purely mathematical system, it still has the same gap in it. It doesn't go away. The gap is there regardless of what the physical significance might be. Does a bubble pop? Is that what happens? Is there an energy threshold that when you cross it, there's sudden disintegration? These are the kind of things that Fuller thought. And he thought, why? Because there's so much, this, this geometry is so organized. Once you get into the unit volume and start exploring, he felt like he was looking at the geometry of nature. It's like, wow, this is really taking me places, right? And it did in his own life, right? He's thinking about this stuff at the same time that he's, I don't want comments, to turn off comments. I think of this as more like my Quaker journal. When I had comments turned on, I was getting a lot of ads for iPods and stuff, and I realized it was going to take forever to moderate. So generally, I do discuss everything I do, but in other forums, not right in my blog usually, okay? So there we have it. Interesting math. Imagine if Henry Kissinger had written 
an important philosophy math and we all study him because of diplomacy we don't all study him but right he's got a place in the curriculum I'd say and but Fuller is kind of who's reading who's reading Fuller now at the university level and is it because it's too easy too hard too irrelevant what is what is the criterion being applied and if we're all specialists, as Fuller worried about in Operating Manual for Spaceship Earth, who has enough context anymore to decide what, what's a good prioritization? My view is we've got one of the most positive futurists of recent times with a track record to prove it, patents, awards, working devices, the dew line, domes at the South Pole, um, Dymaxion yurt, the car, there's so much here and it's kind of being dropped like a hot potato and I think because people worry they don't want to be seen as off the deep end and Synergetics comes across as a little bit off the deep ends and what I've been doing is showing actually if you dive into it it's quite understandable, quite accessible and quite worth the effort and so that's my sort of mission is to and so I get ridiculed as like a fuller disciple an acolyte and these are words that are all used of course to denigrate and defame and you know let's put fuller back in his box back where he belongs kind of a nutty genius that you know he was fun while he lasted but it's time to move on that futurism is never going to happen. Forget about the global grid. The jitterbug might be part of the logo for the International Mathematicians Union, but Fuller was just a popularizer. Dr. Loeb thought there was value in this approach to learning synergetics, but, and Arthur Loeb, and, you know, there's so much here that I feel people are prepared to just toss it all based on my evidence, which is I don't get much support, right? I do get some. And I fund my websites myself, and I do my research out of my own pocket. But um, where is the curriculum that's going to come out of this? Who's going to help on that? Asylum City, Martian Math. I think there's more here than one guy can deal with. Oh, by the way, this letter from Darcy Thompson. Not enough attention given to this. There's a lot of geometry that we could be doing. Think about it. New startups, new businesses, economics here. There's opportunity. So uh, be in touch. Talk to you soon.